Aha! This is Labort, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the things you need. Alright, we start with Dark Sea Blue. Nice gold and dark color for our NMM. Non-metallic metal is a painting technique used to create the illusion of metallic surfaces without using actual metallic paints. It involves using regular paint colors to simulate the reflections and highlights typically seen on metallic objects. So we need to understand light and reflections. Familiarize uh, ourselves with how light interacts with metallic surfaces. Uh, try to study real life references and observe how light reflects, uh, create highlights and produces shadows on metallic objects. Papa Labors have a couple of students by now and I always tell them when we tackle the subject of NMM to look at regular paintings or just real world examples for metals. You can learn so much from those. It's true for every subject uh, you like to paint. Like uh, when I was not sure how to paint some ulcers, I just looked at Granny's feet and took some pictures. I even put those uh, pictures online and sold them for some very bizarre websites, but that's not important. Try to look for references because there is only so much you can learn from a video where uh, someone paints an MM. This an MM is also interesting because it has some scale mail. We need to treat the scale mail as a whole surface and not creating highlights one by one on the scales. At least yet. Because that's Mickey Mouse. We don't do that here, okay? We only paint half of the scales with this color where we want to have the maximum shadows. The consistency I'm using is thin and flows nicely from the brush, but it's not too thin, so it covers really well like a Granny's Ulcer Lotion. After sketching out the first layer, I glaze over the darkest shadows to have a nice and smooth transition like Granny's butt cheek. To do that, just dilute your paint a little bit by adding water with your brush to your wet palette. As you can see, my brush is loaded and just pull the paint away on your palette to have a consistency like this. Always check the paint consistency on your hand first or on uh, someone else's hand first to see if it's good or not. If your consistency is good, then start to glaze, uh, moving the paint from the black to the dark sea blue layer. Same brush motion every time. Like uh, combing granny's hair. You have to be patient and gentle. But if you have too much moisture in your brush, just wipe it off on a paper towel while twisting the brush to shape the tip. Now Papa Laborts mixes some medium sea grey to the dark sea blue and reduce the highlight areas. Of course you don't have to use the same colors, but choose a range of paint colors that mimic the metallic tones you want to achieve. Typically you use a dark base color, mid tones and a lighter color for highlights. For example, these really dark greenish blues were great for NMM, but you can use just black and white uh, just as well. It would be a little bit more boring one, but practicing with uh, different values uh, always can be a valuable experience. In painting, values refer to the relative lightness or darkness of colors. The higher the difference in values, the bigger the contrast we can create. And we like to create something with a high contrast. You see, Dark and cold corals always were great for any NMM because metal is a cold and hard thing. Just like Granny's feet when she sleeps without socks. We could use some more saturated tones to imitate a warmer light in the vicinity. But since we are in a dark dungeon, this theme would fit nicely as well. This bounty hunter had his gear for a while now, so we don't want to make it look like the armor is in mint condition. Let's do some tiny scratches and dots around the highlights. This will add some beat up texture and also help us with blending. To do this you need a nice and pointy tip. So load your brush with paint, remove the excess and shape the brush on your knuckles or on someone else's. Once you have a nice tip and a nice consistency that covers well but flows easily uh, from the brush, try to add these tiny scratches and dots. You have to be very gentle like when you are tickling Granny's armpit. I don't really feel when the brush touches the surface, ok? Super gentle movements with your brush. If you think the armor is too rough for you, then apply a few layers of glaze like we did in the previous step to smooth out the transition. Let's continue the process with medium sea grey. I continue the stippling by creating small dots and scratches while reducing the highlight areas. I do some edge highlights as well because it always helps to sell the NMM effect, especially around the helmets and some of the scales. 
We need to be consistent with the highlights on the scale, so only edge highlight the ones that are close to the medium sea grey highlights. And for the darker parts, use the previous medium sea grey and dark blue mixture for the edges, so even the edge highlights will have an overall gradient. For the brightest highlight we are going to use sky grey. This will push the contrast nicely. I continue to make some more dots and scratches for a more beaten up armor and redo the edge highlights on the helmet with this color as well. If you are having trouble with edge highlights it's all about the right consistency of the paint. You can do edge highlights with a thicker consistency. Maybe it's easier too if you wait for the paint to dry up a little between the bristles and it's more like a dry brush, but try to use the side of your brushes tip. The edge highlights will make the armor look super nice and crispy. Unfortunately, if you make a mistake here, you need to go back with the previous colors and I will slap on your tiny head. Now if you manage to do the edge highlights without making any mistake, you must be feeling pretty good about yourself. But uh, curb your enthusiasm, because we are going to blackline. Blacklining is the icing on the cake with every NMM. We are going to make a super thin blackline between the tiny recesses of the armor. It's going to be a fun process if you have a solid blacklining skills, but Papa Laborts we could use some oils to flow into those uh, crevices and it would be really nice and easy. First. I'm going to tell you what Granny Laborce told me when I tried to take an easy way with something. She said, This type of weakness disgusts me. And then she slapped on my tiny hand. So yeah, we could use oils, but we want to keep working on our black lining muscles. Shape your brush to have a nice tip and use a little bit thinner consistency of black and black line between the plates of the helmet and the scales. If I heard that you guys used oils for this step, I will go to your house and while you are asleep, I will slap on your tiny hand. If you want to see how I painted the rest of the mini, you can access to that content on my Patreon page. The link is in the video description. So thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. A huge thanks to my Patreons who support this kind of videos. With special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes, Cold Blooded Dom, Trying to Paint Minis, Jonathan Mosner, Ruzak, Vlad D, Urtepel21, One Shop Joe Crafts, and Glitchy Macrash. If you want to support the work of Papa Laborts, you can do that on Patreon, where you will have early access to these videos and you can vote on the next penny. And if you need a little bit of extra help, online coaching is also available. I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's bunching.